All right, so I'm going to talk about Boss Taurus and Boss Inticus cattle and kind of the differences between the two. Uh, to start off, what does boss mean? Well, the word boss is a taxonomical classification that is used to describe ruminant mammals of the bovine species. Uh, this classification includes wild and domesticated cattle. And uh, domesticated cattle are typically divided into subspecies of Boss Taurus and Boss Indicus. So uh, Boss Taurus cattle are uh, European breeds of cattle that uh, are kind of classified as the continental breeds. They originated in uh, Europe and the uh, Britain Isles. And uh, these breeds uh, under this classification do better in temperate climates that have uh, typically colder winters. And as you can see right here, there's some uh, different breeds of Boss Taurus cattle. And they typically have, a, a lot of them have darker uh, colored coats. So the breed features of this, uh, most breeds of Boss Taurus cattle have these similar traits. They have tight hides, small ears, they don't have humps on their back, and they have thicker coats, especially during the winter time. Uh, these traits allow for these animals to be more cold tolerant. Uh, breeds of Boss Taurus cattle are really well suited for Europe, northern United States, and southern Australia. Uh, all of these climates are typically have uh, cold winters and uh, these animals do really well because they're hardier animals that can survive those, that type of climate. So uh, I'm going to talk about some of the thermal regulation mechanisms that go on with uh, these type of cattle. Uh, they have a thicker hide which allows for the animal to reduce the amount of heat lost from convection of blowing cold air. A lot of times these animals are out on the, like, especially in the United States, they're up on the high plains or out on the prairie, and uh, there's a lot of wind that blows through there. So <laughs> their thick hides uh, allow them to kind of trap that heat in, and typically they have uh, darker colored hides too, which uh, allows for them to absorb more solar radiation. Uh, they typically have small ears, and uh, this allows for a smaller surface area for a heat loss. So they're able to kind of trap more heat in because not that much heat is uh, being lost throughout their ears. Um, areas of high solar radiation are difficult places for these cattle. And when I'm talking about that, I mean uh, areas that are closer to the equator that get a lot of sun exposure. Um, these, and, uh, these breed of cattle typically don't do well uh, closer to the equator, they're more suited for temperate climates. Some of the more popular breeds within uh, this uh, subspecies of cattle are Angus, Herefords, Simtols, Charlays, and Shortmorns. And uh, now I'm kind of going to elaborate on uh, one of the most popular mm -hmm. breeds. So, uh, Angus cattle is uh, one of the most popular breeds in the world as far as a uh, um, beef production goes and uh, they're pretty uh, they're really important to the industry because there's also like USDA uh, certified Angus beef and uh, a lot of different programs for that. They have a good uh, reputation for carcass quality, meat quality. Oh, yeah. You see it in the grocery store, Angus, tenderloins. Uh, so uh, these animals are typically known for having their black hides. That's kind of one of their key features. Uh, they are also very good mothers. And uh, you can see in this picture here, you got the mother here with her calf uh, out on the prairie. Um, they also offer a lot of calving ease. And uh, I mean, this is important, especially for uh, mothers, and uh, heifers and cows because uh, you're not gonna do that much damage to the mother uh, when she's uh, during, during parturition. And uh, their, uh, one of their most famous qualities is their high carcass quality, like you said before, mm -hmm. Professor. Mm -hmm. um, some of the difficulties that this breed has is does not do well in hot and humid climates. Uh, you'll find these more up north, in the northern part of the United States, uh, Canada, um, they're actually originated from Scotland, so, I mean, 
their uh, breeds of this in uh, the British Isles and uh, some parts of southern uh, southern Australia. Mm -hmm. And uh, they do not, since they have these black hides and these very thick hides, and uh, the hides are very close to their bodies, uh, they do not do well in solar high with areas with high solar radiation. All right, now we're going to go on to Boss Indicus cattle. And these cattle are different from Boss Taurus because they originated in India. Um, one of the most common names for them is a, a zebu, mm -hmm. and these animals are very tolerant of humid and hot climates, and uh, they can handle hot summers that uh, kind of have uh, shorter periods of like water. Uh, the areas where you'll kind of find these animals are in the southern United States, Asia, and uh, northern Australia. All these places. Uh, experience very hot climates and these animals do a lot better in this type of climate than Boss Taurus animals do. So again some of the traits, uh, one of the most distinguishable traits is a hump on the back and what this hump actually is it kind of serves the same purpose as a, uh, a hump on a camel. It's a, it's a deposit of fat that Kind of traps in nutrients and water that the animals actually like can use in times where it really needs it where it hasn't had a lot of food or it uh, has experienced a long time without water um, they typically have large ears uh, they have what's called a dewlop and that's sagging skin on the front of the chest and they have very thin coats of hair this uh, allows them not to trap in the heat as much and kind of stay cooler even though they uh, live in uh, some of the hottest parts of the uh, world. Um, and uh, another thing that's uh, interesting about them is they're better, better suited for walking long distances for water or foraging. And these animals are very hardy. <laughs> uh, they can last out in an area that has a lot of heat and humidity for a long time. Um, the, since uh, diseases and insects are also a big problem in these areas, these uh, animals have genetically kind of like become more resistant to insects and diseases. And that's an also, also another feature which allows them to survive in these climates. Um, in hot, humid climates, it's perfect place for mm. bacteria yeah. and, and uh, all kinds bugs. of insects. <laughs> So the uh, thermal regulation involved with uh, these animals is the large ears allow for heat to escape the animal's core through evaporation and convection. Um, it's kind of the opposite of what the Boss Taurus cattle do. Uh, their lighter coats, like I said earlier, uh, make it more suitable for areas with high amounts of solar radiation and so they are able to live closer to the equator. And the, the loose skin they also have creates more surface area, making the animal more heat resistant. If you can, oh, I'm not on that one yet. Uh, some of the most common breeds of uh, Boss Indicus cattle are Brahmin, Drought Master, and Santra Dracutus. So, this is an example <laughs> of Brahmin cattle. <laughs> And uh, an interesting about, thing about these animals is they're kind of, uh, they're used uh, in uh, bull riding a lot sometimes. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Look at that hump though, that's just a, it's a good example of that hump and the loose skin and the dewlop and oh my gosh, perfect picture. Mm -hmm. You can even see how like it, like everywhere else of its body is kind of like sagging yeah. like the sheath. Yeah, more or, surface area. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Brahmin cattle originated in India, and uh, their advantages, they have high heat and humidity tolerance because they are Boss Indicus cattle. And uh, they're very, they're used a lot with uh, crossbreeding with Boss Taurus cattle. 
Osteur's cattle tend to have better carcass quality, but uh, sometimes in areas like Texas, I know that um, those the Angus and uh, Shorthorns, they're not able to survive as well down there, and so they crossbreed with uh, Brahmins to kind of uh, gain the genetic advantage from that. Mm -hmm. Um, some other disadvantages include uh, uh, they typically have horns which can be uh, kind of dangerous sometimes uh, when you're handling animals or when you're uh, uh, they can hurt other animals as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah and if, an, if a cow has horns they know how to use them that's mm -hmm. the problem <laughs> and they will yeah Sometimes this, uh, this breed of cattle also has uh, problems with maturity. So um, typically you'll see uh, more bulls, Brahmin bulls, because they are used for breeding a lot more. So, and there are my sources. There's your sources. Um, when you were talking about the Brahma in Northern Australia, I had a student in class one time a number of years ago, and everything's big there in Northern Australia. He worked, and I don't want to say ranch, I can't remember what the term was, they don't call them ranches, but we would call it a ranch, over a million acres. Wow. And they had 50,000 brood cows. And how did they muster the cattle, that's a term, muster, gathering them, with little helicopters. And he showed me a picture of this helicopter hovering over this lot of cattle, and there were cowboys too on horses, once they get close they get them but they go out with helicopters, like little one-man helicopters, and muster them to where they want to work them once a year. Phenomenal. Over a million acres. 